Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tyler Lay, and welcome to part two of Testing Cement. Today, we're going to talk about set time. We're going to talk about heat hydration, and we will talk about strength gain. One really important property of cement is set time. Set time gives you some idea about how long it takes for the for the um, concrete to stiffen or how the cement paste stiffens and then that would apply to concrete because that's what stiffens in concrete. Cement paste, right? Right. So this gives you some idea of how much time you have to work with the material before it starts to harden up on you. And there are two arbitrary points that we use to kind of define this or measure this. One of them is called initial set. That's right when things start to stiffen. And one of them is called final set. So the initial set is when concrete just starts to stiffen up on you. It's still, it's still workable. You can still place it. You can still do things with it. But it kind of gives you a warning that things are starting to um, get close, closer at least. And this can happen between one to one and a half hours after mixing. And then final set is when the concrete is a solid with a low module. So I like to think of it as like a piece of, of wood, a piece of soft wood. That's kind of what final set feels like. You can still push on it. You can still get it to move, okay? But it's, it's pretty much a solid at that point. And there's not much you can do about it. So the standard way to measure this is with a test called the VICAT test. ASTM C191. And in this test, you basically drop a needle into cement paste and you see how far, I, I say falls here, it should be penetrates. Okay. And it's kind of like you're driving a pile into cement paste. So you have this big pool of cement paste. You have needles of different sizes because they'll cause different um, stresses, basically. And you drop them into it at, from a known height with a known weight, and you basically measure how far does it go in, okay? And you can measure over time it getting stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. You can hopefully imagine that if I was to zoom in on the surface here, zoom in, that I would have all these particles on the surface. And if it's very early on in their life, they're pretty fluid, then the needle is just going to go right through it right? It's just going to move the particles out of the way. It's not going to be a big deal. But as things start to stiffen, then as that needle starts to penetrate in, then those particles will get stiffer, right? And they'll resist the penetration. And as they get stronger and stronger and stronger, the needle will penetrate less and less and less. And finally, it'll penetrate not very much at all. That's a VICAT test, and that's how it works. So initial set, typically, as I said before, that's when things really start to just harden a little bit, or anywhere between one hour to one and a half hours. And final set, that's when things are pretty much game over, is typically about four hours after mixing. These are all times after mixing, and they correlate kind of with your concrete. Remember. Concrete's going to be different. Concrete may have a different water content, be at a different temperature, have other a lot of other stuff in it as well. But this is an indication of what the set time is. And the people that sell you the cement, they don't know what you're going to do to it. So they're trying to give you a consistent product, a consistent material. And that is what this testing, again, is all about. The next step on the testing train is the heat of hydration. So as Portland cement starts to react, it gives off heat. This is called an exothermic reaction. And the amount of heat released is an indication of the rate of reaction. That means when you give off a lot of heat fast, there's a lot of stuff going on fast. And this is measured with something called an isothermal calorimetry by ASTM C1679. To measure this, you typically take small vials of cement paste, but you can do this with concrete as well. But the most common way is to use small vials of the paste itself. And then you make companion vials of unhydrated cement. You could also use water. You could use any material you want, but they have to be balanced in such a way so that they have the same specific heat. 
same specific heat. This means that it, that it takes the same amount of energy for them to change by one degree Celsius. Okay, that's really important because the instrument is going to use them to compare to one another, at least typically. And this machine that you put out all, all the stuff in measures how much energy is required to keep the samples at the same temperature. That's really important. This is why it's called an isothermal calorimeter. Iso means constant. The machine is actually going to pump in energy or actually take energy away, right? Remove energy from your hydrating material to keep it at a constant temperature. And it uses how much energy did it have to pull away to give you an indication for how much heat is given off. And it makes plots that look something like this. Now this happens in the first, this is in mixing. This period happens in mixing. Okay, and this is called the induction period. This is when you move the concrete from one place to another. So it's really good that concrete has this. We'd be in big trouble if it didn't. Then this is the acceleration period. And this is right around when set starts to happen. Initial set starts to happen somewhere in here. Some people, and then final set starts to happen somewhere in here. And a lot of people have their own opinions on exactly where it happens. The idea is when a lot of heat starts be, being given off, that's when your setting starts to happen. That's when your microstructure starts to be built. And then you get to this something called the deceleration period, where there's not a much, a lot of heat given off. Okay, but this whole process may take like three or four days, right? Maybe three days, less than that, le less than three days typically. Okay, but after three days, our microstructure is still building. We just don't give off heat. It's just building at a different rate or in a different way, right? A lot of times people can use these details to look at different cements, to look at actually balancing how much gypsum. Gypsum is really important for this initial setting phenomenon. Also, if you start to look at admixtures <clears throat> or blended cements, it's a very, very powerful way to look at those systems. So while it's commonly used for Portland cement, this method can be used for lots and lots of different stuff. It's a really powerful way to compare one material to another material and how it reacts. The final test in part two is the compressive strength. To measure this, this is basically a, a, a consistency test for cement. You'd say, what are you talking about? Compressive strength, we use it everywhere. I'll explain in just a second. It's very much a consistency test. You make a mortar, okay? And you're using a standard sand. Yeah, a standard sand. Yeah, that meets a very narrow criteria that you have to order from like a single pit, at least in the United States, you order it from Ottawa, Illinois. You have to ship the sand all over the place to run this test. Expensive, right? You make a set of three cubes that are two inches by two inches by two inches, and they're made in these molds. And they're tested at different time periods. They, they've, some people test them at one, three, seven, 28. Some just pick other, other time periods just depends what they use for consistency. And the one day test is often reported on a mill sheet. The results can be somewhat misleading as the test requires that there's a constant flow in the test. You actually use something called a flow table where you make like a mound of concrete and you, you beat it a couple times and you measure how big does the cow patty get? Ha, crazy, right? And you wanna get a, a consistent consistency consistent flowability. That means the water cement ratio could change with every single cement and be a little bit different. I personally don't think that's fair or right, but that's the way they do it because it's a consistency test. This means the results are a function of the chemical composition, but also the particle size distribution. Because if your cement is finer than someone else's, you're gonna need more water to get the same consistency. That means your water cement ratio is gonna be higher. That means your strength isn't gonna look as good. But in concrete, 
it may be better than someone else's because it's finer, right? And finer is going to be more strength gain, right? Or at least early age strength gain. And that's what our modern society cares about. Also, the strength in concrete cannot really be compared to this at all. Strength in concrete is a function of so many different things, such as like water to cement ratio, admixtures, SCMs, aggregate type, shape of the aggregate, gradation of the aggregate, how you cured it, what your temperature was. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. So again, this is a consistency test so that one plant can compare how its material changes over time. I think it's amazing how much testing goes into cement. I think it's pretty great, and I think it's a great role model for the rest of our industry. We should all strive to be more like them without getting out of control.